Hello, kings and queens. You're listening to Affirmations of Excellence, an offering of personal devotions to fuel your week. I am your guide, Ariel Ellis, and I'm so excited to create a space of encouragement and inspiration for each of you. The person who lives a life of excellence is one who is willing to do and to dare. As living souls made in God's image, we are not called to mediocrity. We are called to excellence. Excellence is the result of a prosperous, well-lived, and fulfilled life. And this podcast is for those who sense a royal calling on your life, those who are learning to hear God's voice and clarity and need motivation for the assignment, and who want to live out His calling with excellence. Each week, we'll explore themes of everyday life and talk through ways to escape mediocrity and find true fulfillment. Last week, we talked about difficult people and how to be or not to be in relationship with them. I notice the grace God has given me to foster and manage healthy relationships, and it's something I'm really grateful for. However, it's something I'm always mindful of because like the rest of you, I don't have it all figured out. I don't have myself figured out. How dare I try to figure out someone else? The truth is, none of us have this thing called life figured out, which means we have to work to achieve excellence in our relationships with one another. Most of us would rank relationships pretty high on the list of life. We all have relationships. We have acquaintances, relatives, colleagues, lovers, neighbors, and friends. Simon Sinek in his book, The Infinite Game, says, quote, True trusting relationships require both parties to take a risk, like dating or making friends, though one person has to take the first risk to trust. The other person has to reciprocate at some point if the relationship has any chance of succeeding, end quote. And that is so true. This means that assuming those that we are in relationships with in any circumstance are doing the best they can. The pursuit of excellence is a habit. It's the pursuit of a lifetime, a commitment that must be continually renewed daily in our relationships that we belong to. So as we determine the worth of our relationships, let's dive in here today. Kings and Queens, be sure to share, rate, and subscribe as you listen today. Healthy relationships can make life enjoyable, perhaps more than anything else. Even if every other aspect of your life isn't the best, if you have good relationships, you can enjoy life. You can make lots of money, but if your relationships are broken or shallow, your life will be empty. People are not disposable. We are all living vessels. We're precious souls. We are imaged after God. Life can be brutal and you need people. God did not intend for us to do life alone. He gave us one another to be in relationship with. So why do we have such a deep need for relationships? The reason is that we were made with a need for relationships. After God made Adam, he came to the conclusion that he needed to make Eve when he said, it is not good for man to be alone. Genesis 2 verse 18. And though this decision established the institution of marriage, It indicates that we are social beings and that we need the companionship and encouragement of others. To feel lonely, rejected, and undesired can make life almost unbearable. In life, so many of us have suffered from hurting or broken relationships. Sometimes our homes are not a loving refuge, but a battleground. Sometimes our marriages are not a safe haven, but a jail cell. Sometimes our friendships are not a space of safety, but a space of stress. Some of us have been shattered by betrayal. Some of us have been attached to dysfunction. Some of us have been stuck in cycles each time, leaving a trail of damaged relationships behind. Some of us won't even speak of the misunderstandings, hurt feelings, and wrongs that have taken place in our lives. Sadly, the loving families, genuine friendships, and healthy relationships that we want most out of life often elude us. I was raised with a very independent mindset as a young woman who would be strong-minded and self-determined. But I was also taught to respect the value of relationships, to seek the wisdom of elders, to be a blessing to others, to share my resources with others, to discern proper interactions, to honor and respect 
the individuality in myself and in others, and to choose friends wisely. But there's one thing I learned later in life that I cherish a great deal, even in some of the most tough lessons I've experienced as an outcome of both good and bad relationships. And that's the fact that we were not created to be independent. God does not expect us to be autonomous or self-sufficient. We were made to have a humble, loving dependency upon God and have a humble, loving interdependency with each other. While we are excellent all by ourselves, we are complete and whole beings. We have all that we need within ourselves, but there are levels in life that we just can't get to alone. We each have gifts and talents to be shared and spread in our relationships. Individualism and doing life on our own is not a part of God's design. When we think we don't need people, we settle for superficial relationships that never go beneath the surface. We defend ourselves when people around us point to a weakness or a wrongdoing. We hold our struggles within, not taking advantage of the resources God has given others to be shared with us. Mediocrity abounds at every turn. We need relationships with people who watch our back and hold us accountable. We need to be connected in community where we can all be on alert for the dangers that are all around us. The truth is, we need each other. We need to trust, rely on, and depend on one another. God gave us each other to walk alongside, encourage, and build up one another in excellence. We are to carry each other's burdens, care for each other's practical needs, warn each other of our wrongs, rejoice in each other's successes, and mourn with each other in sadness. God loves us no matter what we do. Can we do the same for one another? Will you choose to love and be faithful in your relationships, even when the chips are down? We should seek understanding in our relationships. Sometimes our egos get in the way of understanding those we care about. I'll be the first to admit that. We often have a need to be right, and that makes what others think and feel so wrong for us. But empathy can hold relationships together. It allows us to slow down and walk in the shoes of those we have relationships with. How do we get to the right kinds of relationships? We tend to think that having the right kinds of relationships depend on getting exposure to the right kinds of people. But excellence in relationships shows us that to have the right kind of relationships, I must be the right kind of person. I must know myself enough to know what kind of relationships I need. Here are a few things I need in relationships, and you might be able to relate. I need relationships with people who accept me. Everyone has the deep inner desire to be accepted. Showing others through my attitude and my actions that I accept them no matter what opens the way for them to accept me and take me as I am. When people accept you, they also share your burdens. Someone who is willing to help and become involved in my problems and to share my burdens is a special soul. Not only will they do this for me, but they will be vulnerable enough to let me do that for them. I need relationships that reflect loyalty. Whether in business or in romance, one of the true marks of a good relationship is when someone keeps their word. They are there when you need them, and you can count on them. Of course, you can't be there for everybody all the time. Your time, energy, and resources are limited. But what you can do is identify the genuinely important people in your life and then seek to be there for them as much as possible, at least for them. I need relationships that encourage me. We all need encouragement. The encouragement of others keeps me accountable to my excellence and away from the trap of mediocrity. I need thoughtful relationships. Thoughtfulness is a quality that we appreciate in others. I am sure that others appreciate this quality in me, and I know I can do more to express my thoughtfulness for with whom I'm in relationship. I need relationships with those I can trust. Integrity is the alignment between your thoughts, your words, and your actions. This trust is one of the pillars of a strong relationship, both in your personal and your professional life. This is crucial because if you have integrity, people can trust you. If I want someone I can trust, I must be trustworthy in myself. I need honest relationships. I appreciate honesty because to me, it shows that someone cares enough for me to correct me or protect me. Be honest with the people around you, even if this will initially hurt them. 
When your honesty is led by love, they will appreciate you for it. I need relationships that are valuable. When mutual understanding and when reciprocity exists, the value of the relationship increases. I don't want to consider any person to be unimportant. I want to see each person as a special creation of God. If he values them, so do I. I need relationships that are interesting. I get bored easily and my attention can be sustained by people who are genuinely interested in me and allow me to express interest in them and their work or their lives. I need influential relationships. I need people who make me better. Iron sharpens iron. And when my relationships are filled with new experiences and insights, I am likely to grow and gain influence on my own. As we consider each of these qualities, let us ask ourselves, am I this kind of person? Do I have these kinds of qualities in my life? Do I accept and encourage others? Am I loyal and can I be trusted? Am I thoughtful to others? and Do I show interest in them? Am I honest with people and acknowledge the value that they add to my life? Do I use my influence effectively? Do I have enough people in my life who portray these qualities and do these things for me? Take a second to think about it. Kings and queens, all relationships are not alike. We should understand that there are different levels of relationships. Acquaintances, casual relationships, work relationships, close relationships, and intimate relationships. Each of these can influence us in varying levels. We are not as greatly influenced by acquaintances and casual friends as we might be by those who we choose to be intimate and close with. This brings us to an important principle regarding relationships. We become most like those we choose to be around most. However, for a large percentage of us, many of these relationships are not fulfilling. Most people are good people, but not every good person is good for you. Because someone is good doesn't mean that pursuing a relationship with them is good to do or that the relationship will last a lifetime. The right relationships can advance your life beyond belief, but bad relationships can derail, detour, and even destroy your destiny. God doesn't command us to be close and intimate with everyone. Though he expects us to love them, he does not expect us to give everyone we meet equal influence in our lives. Deciding to enter a relationship based on trust and mutual respect instead of feelings that can change frequently increases our chances of success. Bad or weak relationships are unfulfilling because they lack real strength. And they lack real strength because they lack real depth. Unfortunately, we tend to have superficial and shallow relationships, and it's extremely hard for this kind of relationship to provide anything more than a surface level satisfaction. Pursuing excellence means that I am intentional about building relationships that have a significant amount of depth and give my life a whole lot more meaning. You need relationships you can depend on. If you don't have them, ask God to direct you to those whom he would like for you to be connected to. Ask him to direct you with those who have a heart like yours. Make it your purpose to be a blessing to them. And as you do, you will discover the beauty of authenticity that God wants us to experience in relationships. I must warn you, however, against depending on relationships for your happiness. Depending on another imperfect person to bring you fulfillment and happiness isn't a good strategy because sooner or later, we are bound to be disappointed. The happiness you bring within yourself will attract the happiness within others. Needy relationships are almost always built on this mindset and are rarely happy, and they often bring strife and conflict. Unrealistic expectations, even unspoken or unmet expectations placed on the other person, leave us feeling empty when the pressure gets too heavy and they can't deliver. Relationships should bring us joy and not make us miserable. There will be tough moments in certain relationships. Maybe the stakes are high at work and your otherwise pleasant boss is becoming difficult. Maybe a shift is happening with your children and you're trying to navigate the changes. Maybe a loved one who is generally active and responsive to you needs some time and space to work through some personal issues. Keep in mind that everything isn't about you. 
God isn't concerned as much about the comfort of your relationships. He is concerned about using your relationships to get you to grow and to show you how to pour into others. So there will be relationships that you didn't choose and you won't know how they will impact you until the lesson is revealed. Any relationship worth keeping is worth fighting for. But if you are experiencing anything less than joy in your relationships with the people you choose, you're dealing with the wrong people. It's okay to admit that a relationship is toxic, unpleasing, and should come to an end. It's okay to admit you put someone in the wrong category or pursued more or less of a relationship than what was actually meant to be. In those moments, it could be time to move on, worry less about who isn't present, and focus your attention on who is. Letting God guide us in our relationships guarantees success, but when we build relationships on selfish motives of control or gain, they almost always self-destruct. Kings and queens, the people who see through you are the ones who see you through. Many people try to come off as perfect. They don't talk about their failures. They hide their shortcomings and they never say anything that can embarrass them. This is all a facade, though. You are human and humans have flaws. By hiding your flaws, you're not being real. And this makes it very hard for anyone to connect with you. Humans connect with other humans. Keep this in mind and don't be afraid to let your vulnerability and your humanity show. This is what takes a relationship to the next level of excellence. I am learning to be a container, a philosophy by professor, author, and researcher Dr. Brene Brown. When I self-published my first book, I was blessed to be offered a book signing at the Barnes & Noble Bookstore at South by Southwest, a huge conference held every year in Austin, Texas, where Dr. Brown was a keynote speaker. In her book, Men, Women, Worthiness, The Experience of Shame, and the Power of Being Enough, she unpacks the idea that in our relationships, we serve as containers for one another. A container determines what gets in and what gets out. To be a container in relationships mean that there's safety and security. Whether personally or professionally, you can use your relationships to be a container for others. Secrecy can spoil, silence can decay, and judgment can erode. But to be a container as a healthy, happy, healed person means that I am a whole individual prepared to pursue excellence in my relationships. And as I think about my relationship with God, I see Him as a container. He covers me. He wraps me. He hides me. He protects me. He holds me. He preserves me. And he shields me. I in no way can replace God. But if I can use my relationships to be a container for someone else, I can get closer to the excellence I'm seeking. Remember this, kings and queens. We are better together. And we are safer together. Though society might tell us that we can do life on our own, God simply tells us that we can't function without each other. We need each other and we need relationships. We need them for our destiny. A loving relationship with God is of first importance, but loving relationships with others is the immediate second. As you invest in relationships, thank God for them. Today, pick up the phone or shoot a text and let people know just how much they mean to you and just how much you appreciate them. The most perfect love comes from our relationship with God. This form of love is sacrificial and self-giving. True love is about putting the other person's needs before your own. And if we desire this in our relationships, it's important that we model this. Now that we've explored how relationships influence our excellence, let's pursue these affirmations for the week. Say this with me. God did not intend for me to do life alone. I need people and people need me. I welcome healthy relationships into my life. I must let go of any toxic or damaging relationships. I will consult with God in pursuit of every relationship. I am blessed to be a blessing.
kings and queens, may you be fully equipped to master excellence in the world this week. Go be excellent and don't forget your crowns.